Hello everyone, this is Craig Merriweather and welcome to Depression 180. On this show, we're going to discuss, you guessed it, depression. Now, this is the last episode on the four primary causes of depression. Research has shown that there are four very different underlying causes of depression. Illness or imbalance in your body's physiology, that was episode one. Medications and environmental toxins, that was episode two. And this episode, we're going to go over the last two, number three and number four. Now, the point of the show is to give you the information you need, but not to take up too much of your time because I know you're busy. So I've been trying to keep these shows relatively short. Now, if you want a MP3 download of the full four primary causes of depression that goes into great detail about all four, then go to depression180.com and you'll also be able to download an audio recording called What Antidepressants Do to Your Brain. Now, like I just said, in part one and part two of the series, I went through how illness or imbalance in your body's physiology and medications and environmental toxins have been shown to cause depression. Today, we're going to cover emotional and psychological trauma and your habitual thought patterns. So here are number three and number four in the four primary causes of depression. So let's go with number three, emotional trauma. Now, experiencing emotional and psychological trauma in your life, whether recently or decades ago, could create a sense of vulnerability, helplessness, and despondency. Now, over time, this could lead to troubling emotions, frightening memories, or living in a state of hypervigilance. Psychological problems such as depression, anxiety, guilt, shame, self-blame, anger, and fear may emerge, as well as psychological ones like fatigue, insomnia, nightmares, high blood pressure, muscle tension, headaches, and racing heartbeat. In fact, some of the symptoms of depression are similar to post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, there are no guidelines or rules that make an event traumatic. It's your own emotional experience or perception of the event that's disrupting your sense of safety and security. Now, everyone will experience stress in their lives. It's what helps us make a deadline at work or deal with emergencies. But stress is an expensive operation for the body to undergo, and it is so costly that it should only be used in case of combat, a major accident, fire, natural disaster, or an animal attack. Stress is fine if you allow the body to burn off those stress hormones through fighting, running, or intense physical work. You know, our ancestors lived a lifestyle where stress and a fight-or-flight mechanism was necessary and a welcome part of existence. It kept them alive. But here's the problem. We humans can activate the fight-or-flight response by merely thinking of a stressful event, whether a real past event or an imaginary future event. If the stress response is being used day in and day out because you're going through, let's say, a a divorce or illness or other major life upset, or if you're turning it on for the, the little things in life like rush hour traffic or meetings or bill paying time or future worrying, then the fight or flight response will be unable to shut down and reset itself. If that happens, the stress hormone cortisol can fill the body, disrupting sleep, appetite, energy level, sex drive, and your mood regulation. More importantly, studies have tied even insignificant amounts of stress hormones to causing depression and intensifying existing depression. In fact, when corticosteroid medications are prescribed for inflammatory or other ailments, two of the common side effects are depression and anxiety. Now, about half of those diagnosed with clinical depression have excess cortisol in their system. One study, published in the Journal of Psychosomatic Medicine, found that cortisol levels of depressed individuals were 68% higher than those without depression. And when the depression disappears, the cortisol levels return to normal. However, the connection between stress and depression is complicated and circular. Ongoing stress often leads to neglecting healthy choices in your life, nutrition, lack of exercise, drinking too much, watching too much TV, and reducing your socializing. That can lead to depression. Stress and depression feed on each other, and the more stressed you are, the more likely you'll struggle with depression, and as the depression grows, the more stressful your life can become. Now, traumatic experiences in your life can create an intense breeding ground for depression, anxiety, anger, self-hatred. Trauma may come from a a one-time event, such as a devastating accident, unexpected loss of a loved one, a humiliating experience, a natural disaster, or violence. But it can also result from ongoing overwhelming stress, such as sexual, physical, or verbal abuse, bullying, neglect, combat experience, or serious illness. 
Trauma from childhood experiences can be especially scarring, leading to emotional difficulties in adult life. But even if the event happened last week, that experience could cause sadness, fear, anger, pain, rage, guilt, anxiety, shame, self-blame, which can build upon itself until you are just depressed, numb, and detached from other people. Dr. James Gordon, author of Unstuck, explained, quote, the more distressing the events and our experiences of them are, the longer they persist, and the earlier in life they occur, the more likely they are to cause long-term biological changes. And those who do experience painful or stressful early life losses of love seem to be more vulnerable to the same kind of stress and trauma later in life and to depression. Now that was number three in the four primary causes of depression. Here's number four. Habitual negative thought patterns. Now, every time you experience something in your life, a, a kiss, a great pizza, being yelled at, failure, you create connections between your brain cells and your head. Experience that same event over and over again, or what you, your mind perceives to be the same thing, and the connections become stronger until a habit is formed. That habit will cause you to act in a certain way, think a certain way. That habit will cause you to act in a certain way, to think in a certain way, and to feel in a certain way. Trigger that habit over and over again, and it will become automatic. How you feel about your life experience physically rewires your brain. Now, every minute of every hour, your mind is reacting automatically to the information and experiences that come into your brain based on these habits. The world's greatest magic trick is how the brain makes sure that your results in your outside world match what you are thinking and feeling on the inside. Your relationships, your happiness or depression, emotional set point, uh, health, the money you earn, the actions you take or don't take must match the brain connections you have consciously or unconsciously created regarding how you think and feel about yourself and the world around you. If your brain is bathed in negative thoughts about yourself and the world around you, it is these thoughts that cause your depression. However, Research has shown that this depressive, negative thinking nearly always contains gross distortions. Your thoughts appear to be true and valid, but your thinking is not based on reality. Your thoughts and beliefs about yourself and the world around you are exaggerated and irrational. As Dr. David Burns, author of Feeling Good, explains, depression is an illness that always results from thoughts that are distorted in some way. Not sometimes, not every now and then always results from thoughts that are distorted in some way. Look, when you were learning how to walk or ride a bike, drive a car, or, or brush your teeth even, it took quite a lot of concentration. But as you practiced those things over and over, they became easier. That's because brain cells that fire together wire together. And the more they fire together, the stronger and faster that wiring becomes until it becomes that automatic habit. Now you don't have to think anymore about walking, driving, or riding a bike. Your subconscious mind is taken over. Well, thoughts also fire brain cells. And if you keep thinking the same thoughts over and over, which creates the same emotions, then you start wiring those brain cells together and they become stronger and faster. That thinking pattern becomes an automatic habit. So what do you practice for every day? Are you practicing for sadness, despair, frustration, disappointment? Your distorted thinking and the rehearsing of that distorted thinking connects certain brain cells together. When you fire these brain cells over and over again, you create your self-image and self-worth. And it is through the perception of your self-worth that you establish your depression or happiness set point. But remember that your depression is created by thoughts that are distorted in some way. And this is something I go to in great detail in the Depression 180 program. So if you've listened to all three episodes of the Four Real Causes of Depression, I hope you've gotten a great uh, introduction as to how depression can be caused by a lot of these different events going on in your life, in your body, in your mind. Now, depression is, is a biological response to life. There's no one-size-fits-all diagnosis for depression. Depression is unique to everyone who experiences it. There could be just one simple reason for a depression, or it could be a, a cocktail of predisposition, childhood experiences, trauma, thought habits, brain chemistry, and behavior modeling from your parents. Like I just said, depression is a biological response to life, and this response is influenced by our feelings, thoughts, 
actions, automatic reactions, nurture or, or lack thereof, alcohol intake, drug use, hours of good sleep, exercise or lack of exercise, uh, lack of sufficient income, whether or not we like our work, where we live, our relationships to parents, friends, co-workers, employees, spouses, ex-spouses, and children. It's something that you need to take a deep, hard look at in your life. Look at these four causes. See which one fits into your life and then start working to reverse the damage that is being done. If that means getting help through a coach or a therapist, then do so. That is so tremendously important. We don't do this alone. We don't do this alone. And if you need to get help, then ask for it. So I, I hope the these series is, is being helpful for you. And if you want to get those downloads and get the full Four Real Causes of Depression download, go to depression180.com. And I'll talk to you again real soon.